What's going on guys? I wanted to just talk about finances for professional footballers around the world. Most professional footballers. I'm not talking about Premier League, La Liga, you know, the players that you know of, um, that everybody knows of, the most famous ones. I'm not talking about them. They're in a class of their own. That's a very, very small percentage of most footballers. But I did want to talk about what finances look like for the vast majority of professional footballers and for that matter professional athletes the first thing i would say is that footballers generally wear multiple hats and what i mean by that is they'll work multiple jobs at once um, a lot of people will work just a, a nine to five and then train at night um, and might have a, another job on the side work a little bit on the weekends or after hours or early mornings or online or remote um, just to make ends meet because the reality is what players are getting paid by clubs for their for their services on the field is not even close to being able to sustain them uh, by itself now you might remember some high profile examples like in 2016 i think it was in the euros the iceland men's national team was was doing was really successful um, which was surprising because iceland is such a small country and the men that were playing in that national team, when they weren't playing for their national team, they were, they were working in factories they were, or they were fishermen. So football was not their first job. And that was why it was so remarkable that these, these people who, whose first jobs were you know, something other than football were being so successful on this world stage against some of the best countries in the world, like France, like Portugal, etc. From my experience, oftentimes a club will offer housing they might offer food, but that's probably more rare. And they might offer a bit of money, but you usually don't get all three. Uh, it depends on the region of the world that you're in. I've played in Australia. Australia is a, a fairly wealth, wealthy country. So conditions for footballers over there are better than most other countries. And players, foreigners often get uh, all three of those things, food, money, and housing or some combination of two of the three. Now, in addition to there being a lot of disparities region to region in how much a player can get paid for playing, there are also a lot of differences in how reliable a club might be in actually paying the player at all or on time. I know personally some players who have had a contract in hand and that contract just be ripped up and then sent home. Uh, or players who are playing and competing week in, week out and are not getting paid at all or their payments are extremely delayed. There are places where these kinds of things happen more often than other places. A uh, FIFA Pro report from 2016 found that in Eastern Europe this happens a lot more, um, but it can happen anywhere. I met a player while I was in Australia who had the same thing happen to him and his payment for the last match of the season, he just never received. And at the end of the day, as a, as a footballer, if you're not playing in one of the top leagues in the world, you just simply can't rely on football to, to be your entire livable wage. So the bottom line is a player has to be very creative and very resourceful with how they spend their time outside of training to make those ends meet. One industry that is a go-to for footballers because this, this industry exists no matter where you go is hospitality, so restaurants and things like that, cafes. These kinds of jobs can be more accessible because like I said, they're everywhere. Uh, most often, restaurants and cafes and things like this are understaffed, so they're always looking for people. Um, and oftentimes, they will be looking for people on a temporary basis. There's a lot of turnover in this industry. So you might see athletes working, oftentimes, jobs in hospitality. Another great option for footballers is a remote job. So remote job is probably the ideal uh, extra way to, to bring in money on the side in addition to playing wages because you can work from the comfort of your own home. And oftentimes remote jobs allow you to work on a flexible schedule. So that's great, especially if you're working in different time zones. Um, these, these kinds of positions offer you that, that flexibility and um, allow you to prioritize training and playing and, and then work when you can. Remote jobs can be harder to get because so many people want them and also there tend to be a lot of fake scammy type positions that are advertised so you just have to be a little bit more discerning as a player when you're looking for these kinds of jobs but if you have a university degree or you're self-taught in some other skills 
coding or as a, uh, an executive assistant, something like this, you can really le leverage um, those kinds of skills. And if you're persistent enough, you can get yourself a remote job and, and that will that will help you make ends meet as a professional footballer, not earning a lot of money from your from your club. The current remote job that I work, I managed to get the same way that I reach out to uh, clubs and coaches and scouts for playing opportunities. Just tireless, relentless outreach, networking, Googling, and things like this, and just a lot of applications. That's really what it takes at the end of the day. A lot of the time, a club that you're playing for will also allow you to, and enable you to work as a coach, um, maybe as a referee as well, refereeing youth games. So if you're lucky, a club will be helpful in setting up those additional working opportunities to earn extra cash on the side. And that can be really, really helpful too, especially in helping set up more connections and networks and meeting people in, in other environments outside of just training. There are lots of great uh, websites online that allow people to sign up as a tutor and offer tutoring services. So I was lucky enough to, to get myself a college degree so I can leverage that information that I have to pass on as a tutor and work online as a tutor. Now that's not gonna be you know, 40 hours a week, but if I, if I can add five hours a week or 10 hours a week of tutoring, that is really gonna help as well. So you're probably starting to see that there are a lot of different things that a footballer may be doing on the side to earn money. And oftentimes that is necessary because the conditions in world football are quite poor for the vast majority of players. This is especially true in women's football because the money in women's football is so much less than compared to men's football. And for most men's football clubs, money is already extremely tight. So you can imagine how much more of a struggle it would be for women athletes. The big difference there is that for women athletes, the highest level of women athletes up until very recently, were also still having to work second and even third jobs. While compared to the highest level of the men's game, they're making enough money that they don't have to work other jobs. That's it guys, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that side of football, share a little bit of insight um, and about my experience. Uh, most people probably don't know that about professional footballers and about professional athletes and many players never never talk about it or never have the chance to talk about it. So um, if you have any questions about something that I didn't mention or didn't cover, leave it in the comments. I'm always happy to answer questions. As always guys, thank you for watching. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, tell me what you wanna see next time. If you hated it, leave it in the comments too. It'll help my engagement anyway. See you next time guys.